Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today it's going to be another project video which is uh, revolves around a mode bus uh, to MQTT gateway uh, which is this one and this is a new board that, will, that I received from PCBWay so PCB is well basically uh, sponsoring this video by providing this uh, board for me and this board is going to convert the data from this uh, Eastron SDM120 single phase energy meter and then it's going to you know push all this information to MQTT so this video is about uh, this new sketch that I did for this this new board why I designed a new board for this project and I'm going to talk about how this one um, you know how this uh, new project works and how the code works how you can use it and, and of course everything is going to be on github so by the time you see it uh, the code is going to be published and it's going to be available for you and obviously I've reused some of my earlier examples how I converted a mode bus data from a grow watt solar inverter to MQTT and I have yet another project where it is, I have a 16 channel um, current meter. Uh, but what I did now is I expanded the code a little bit better. So there is also like a web interface and a JSON HTTP output. So I wanted to add a few more functionalities. So if you don't need MQTT, but you want to access the, uh, the data in other ways, now you have those options as well. So in this video, I'm just going to give you some um, introduction why I'm doing this. And I'm also going to talk about this new board, why I designed a new PCB. And of course, I'm going to talk about the new sketch which is running on this, which is especially designed for this single phase energy meter. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturer of all type of PCBs, offered PCB prototyping services, but you can also order fully assembled PCBs as well. If you need flexible PCBs, you are covered too. Besides PCBs, they also offer CNC machine services, 3D printing as well, with a huge selection of materials and printing technology. I am an absolute beginner when it comes to electronics and PCB design, and all my projects are about designing special boards where I use development boards and maybe some passive components. But I have to tell you that these boards are already light years from the breadboard projects in terms of looks and reliable operation. And these PCBs really turn my prototype projects to live projects that I will use for the years to come. If you like my projects, I always link a link to my PCB that you can order directly from PCBWay. Or if you want to buy a different board or service from them, please use my referral code, which you will also find in the video description. So the first question is why I'm doing this. And if you have seen my channel update video around the end of last year, I said that I'm planning to buy an electric car and probably there are going to be a couple of projects re revolved around the electric car. And if you have seen my recent Reolink NVR video, you, ca you have probably seen the, a new car on the driveway. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, yeah, if I turn on my uh, camera view, you can see this uh, Volkswagen E-Up. Um, I don't know whether it's called a compact or a subcompact. I'm not really sure what is the class of these, but I would say that probably this is one of the smallest electric cars that are available on the market. Um, and I think it's still available because uh, now the, you know, the electric models are mostly the ID models. And this was definitely an earlier model. And I think the production of these are already stopped, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, this is an earlier model from uh, uh, 2017. So I bought this second hand and arrived about a week ago. So what I wanted to do is um, I obviously want to monitor the energy use of this car. And uh, for that, I'm going to reuse this uh, Eastron SDM 120 single phase uh, energy meter. And this was the first device that I used to play around with the mode bus and um, no dread back like two years ago so i have a video on you know how you use this how you set it up how you change the default address and and settings and configuration of that so i'm not going to talk anything about that and um, i mean obviously i had other projects where i was converting mode bus to mqtt using these small boards and um, i was um, also i also wanted to redesign the board for this uh, because uh, the earlier board wasn't really good for you know for some of the applications 
So maybe let me just talk about why I have redesigned this board. So if you remember the earlier version of the board, which looked like this, uh, that was also man uh, manufactured by PCB Vape. So uh, the idea for this one is, um, I mean, it had the same sort of components. So the ESP was sitting here, the um, RS485 to TTL was uh, sitting here, and there was an expansion header here, which I thought I could use it for a temperature like a DHC22, but I never really used those, uh, you know, headers for that. And, but some of the projects I wanted to, uh, to have a NeoPixel LED. So it can, I can use the colors to give me some feedback of, you know, if the communication is working or if there are any issues with the communication. And it was a good idea, uh, but the problem was that this board was designed around this small H-Link power supply, which is rated only for 600 milliamps. And what I noticed that if I was running the ESP alone, everything was fine, but as soon as I added this small LED, um, the, the whole project became really um, uh, unreliable. And I think it was just, I um, was just hitting the limit of this power supply. So if I was using the, um, the small NeoPixel as well, then the ESP would reboot, it wouldn't work reliably, it wouldn't you know, query the mode bus all the time. So definitely I wanted to uh, design a new board, so I can use a different power supply. And when I say I want to use a different power supply, I also meant that in some of the cases or in some of the projects that I use already, I wasn't powering these from mains because um, there was another device which was using 24 volts or I had multiple of these boards and I wanted a single 5 volt power supply. So what I thought in this new version of the board is I wanted to do two things. Uh, I wanted to eliminate this uh, mains power supply, so it would be always DC. So what I designed is I designed a separate header. So as you can see, it has uh, five volts and ground. So if you have a five volt power supply, like an, like an old laptop power, uh, sorry, not laptop, but phone charger or something. I mean, if you have a phone charger, you can connect it to the micro USB connection to the ESP as well. But um, I have um, um, some of these DIN rear mountable uh, 5 volt power supplies, it's a small mean well power supply, so I'm using those. Or if you have another one like uh, 12 volts or 24 volts, then you can use these mini DC to DC converters. So I've used this in, uh, in a few projects as well, and this is rated I think up to like 30 amps, sorry, 30 volts and 1.3 amps. So that's more than enough to drive the ESP and the, um, the LED as well. So you have the option to, from this connector to use the ground and the V in, but then you install this uh, small um, power supply or DC to DC converter here in this footprint. And then this is going to give you five volts. I'm going to link, uh, leave the link for all of these in the video description. So I purchased this from AliExpress some time ago. And of course, what I wanted to add is, well, definitely this NeoPixel. So I designed a specific header for the NeoPixel. And um, again, I purchased these NeoPixel boards. So it's basically one NeoPixel LED with the, uh, I think these are capacitors uh, to stabilize the, the data line, which is required. So, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be difficult to put these onto the boards as well, but uh, because I have all these modules lying around, I think I ordered 100 of these at some time. I'd probably use like five or six. So I still have plenty of these around. And I thought I can just easily solder the, uh, like a 90 degree header to it, and I can use this in the project. And then now the, the socket is pin compatible with the, with the NeoPixel, so I can just plug it in like this, and that's good. And also, I created uh, headers for all the unused pins of the ESP. So if you want to use it for uh, something else, in this header you find, you know, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, ground, and basically you can see uh, all the unused uh, pins, like D8, D7, D4, D0, and the A0. So that can be used for further project. So that's the new version of the PCB, and of course it's going to be available on, uh, I mean the project is going to be available on GitHub, and I will create a project page on uh, ES, uh, sorry, on PCB Way, where you can 
uh, purchased this board or download the Gerber files and everything. And by the way, this one is still available. So if if you don't <coughs> sorry if you don't need the LED but you want the power supply, then you can get this uh, board as well. And I've reused it in some of my other projects as well. So that's definitely working, uh, but it is working if you're not using the NeoPixel LED. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up, connect it to my laptop. So at the moment, I'm just going to power the ESP from this board, sorry, from USB, and, um, and I'm going to hook this up into the power socket which is up there sorry about that so now it's hooked up to power and uh, i'm not going to connect any load for the time being but i think later on i'm going to connect some load as well so we can see some actual data and um, i don't think it's going to come through in the camera very well but you can see that it actually uh, flickers in a few different colors so the idea is that anytime Whenever it communicates with the, um, with the mode bus, when it sends a request, it turns to yellow. And then when a, a response is received, it, tur it turns to green. So the usual pattern is that there is a very short yellow and a green. So that means that there is a mode bus communication. And if there is a longer yellow and then red, uh, that means that the response has timed out. And that's just an easy way for me to tell what is happening and in the beginning when it's trying to connect to the Wi-Fi and the MQTT then it just uh, there is a continuous pink light. So first of all I want to show you the various interfaces and how this board works and if you have seen any of my Modbus videos then it's going to be fairly similar so um, I've uh, set this up to uh, post everything in a car charger topic and at the moment we see two information we see an error message because uh, uh, I haven't powered up the, uh, S e, the, you know, the energy meter module, so it's not able to communicate with it. Um, and this is why it's sending a response timed out. But there is also like a status topic where it just, you know, sends the uptime and the RSSI and the IP and all the other version information and also the client ID. And by the way, if you look at any of my Growbot inverters, it's the same, you know, the same structure that I used back there as well. So... Um, um, I'm here, I've obviously reused the project um, and I just modified the mode bus part so it you know suits with the communication for this particular device. Okay, so that's the MQTT part and of course once we receive data then the data mode will come which I'm going to show you later on. Um, and now I have created a simple web page as well and I just uh, I've taken some design from uh, some random website, I just googled for some you know dashboard templates and I was given this one I quite like it to be honest so it has a couple of cards which shows the uh, the voltage the current the active power the power factor the frequency and the total active energy and there is also my mode bus status which is showing response time right at the moment there are a couple of other things that this unit can measure because um, this energy meter can measure uh, you know power in both directions so actually there is uh, you know, generated power and also you can get reactive energy, but I won't be using that. So I'm not even reading all the registers that are available for this device. Um, uh, and these are the important ones that I, I, I thought I'm just going to show it. Not that I'm really going to bother about the power factor and the frequency, but yeah, it's mostly going to be volts and amps. And, and to be honest, it's going to be mostly power and the actual, you know, the total energy consumption. And as I mentioned, there is also a status topic. So if you go like the IP status, then it's just going to give all this information in a big uh, JSON as well. So if I start to turn on, so let me turn on the power. So the mode bus unit powers up. And then what we are going to see that uh, now it is able to communicate with the mode bus device. And uh, oh, I'm not sure what that first data was but um, yeah so we have 230 something volts um, well nothing is connected so zero amps zero current and that's the um, total energy that the unit measures and this is why I like this unit because it actually keeps track of the um, the energy use so I don't have to calculate it manually so I just read it from the device 
and you know the status is okay and if I refresh that you can see that the, the, the same information is coming through the data attribute and if I go to MQTT now we can see the data here as well so voltage current active power and you know total active energy and uh, if and let me just resize this so we can see both the MQTT and the web page on the same same screen and I'm connecting a small fan to this uh, energy meter and the fan is now on I think it's 25 watts or 20 watts so now you can see that the you know the watts go the active power goes up or obviously current goes up and the same information is coming through here as well and also here in the MQTT as well and of course uh, the unit would keep you know counting the energy so by the time but you know after some time this would just go to like 62 or um, yeah so that would be 10 watt hours so it's going to take some time until we accumulate 10 watt hours with this small fan but yeah you can see the power factor here for and the frequency so everything is working um, let me just actually turn off the fan so we don't hear the noise and I'm not really sure if the the blinking is going to come through especially with the colors but now I think you can see that it's mostly like you know green blinks uh, with some intermittent yellow so that just means that the communication is up and running and everything is working and by the way if you look at the output we can see this um, sending JSON status because uh, this web page is is continuously reading the same JSON HTTP output and then putting the values onto the screen so as soon as I, if I close this uh, page then that's no longer happening and then we just have the the occasional MQTT update so I think the MQTT update is like every 10 seconds or something like that and the status is every minute so let me actually show you the code and then before we go into the code we, we, but, but before we dive into the code I just want to show you the uh, how you can just implement it for yourself again I use the same concept that I have a globals H and uh, where we can see just the, the global variables the main code is going to be the STM uh, 122 MQTT that's the main um, code and uh, you don't have to modify anything in here and also there is a settings.h and er anything that you want to modify is actually going to be here so first of all what you would definitely need to do is you need to configure this device to use I think the default board rate is 2400 boards so I increased that to 6, 9,600 boards and I have also changed the um, the mode bus slave ID so again by default that would be 1 and I changed it to 30 because I was using this uh, in conjunction with some other devices so obviously you need to change that or set the device to 9600 and also you change the slave ID to you know whatever your slave ID is and then you should be able to re, um, leave, sorry, leave the rest of it as it is because obviously that's uh, how the, the unit is hooked up in the PCB and you know some of the up update intervals as well and there are some further settings down here so obviously you can specify here your uh, Wi-Fi SSID and the password your MQTT server details you can uh, specify a client ID and from this client ID the unit is going to generate a client ID by adding the last six digits of the MAC address so if you would run multiple of these on the same network then uh, the client ID would be different and there is a root topic so everything goes under the car charger topic for me and I also wanted this device to run on a fixed IP address so I, here I define the fixed IP address but if you don't want to use fixed IP you can just comment out this single line here and then it's going to use dynamic IP and this is all you need to modify and uh, so you download the project you make these changes here in the settings.h and then you upload and also I wanted to mention that there is a list of libraries here but I'm going to list the, the libraries on my github page as well
if you're interested in the code details, I'm going to go through some of these, but uh, it's only, I'm, I'm just going to mention a couple of things because uh, I've already gone through the main code when I did my Grovat um, gateway. And as I said, I just took that project and I started to modify it. So it works with this uh, mode bus unit. So the, you know, the main thing is, is pretty much the same. The only thing which has changed here is the, it is the mode bus query. And there is a little bit of quirk with this um, energy meter unit, because if you look at the, the mode bus protocol documentation for this SDM120, you can see that, um, um, you know, it has a bunch of input registers for all these values. And uh, these input registers are spaced out for some reason. I'm guessing the reason for this, because they would be using the same registers for a free phase version as well. So if you look at the voltage uh, in a free phase version, you probably have like free voltages and free currents. And this is why there are empty, you know, slots between these um, uh, registers. So I thought, and as you can see here, there is like apparent power, reactive power. So as I said, I'm not, you know, import energy, export energy. So as I said, I, I didn't want to use all the registers. So the ones that I only needed uh, for my application. Uh, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to do like a one bulk read and uh, just get all the information in one request and then, you know, start slicing the data and then only pick what I need. But um, it, it just wasn't working. So what I ended up doing is I had to just query each of these input registers one by one. I don't know why um, it is working like this, but even if I try to read like two registers, it just wouldn't work. So I had to just uh, read one by one. And of course, even reading two registers wouldn't work because as you can see, like the first two registers are like six empty registers in between. So anyway, I'm reading registers one, seven, uh, I think it's 13 and 31, 71 and it's the 73, I think. It's the import active energy. No, the total active energy, so 343. So these are the couple of registers that I read, and I had to implement uh, some sort of queuing method where I, as you can see, I have like a read cycle, which goes from zero to five, and then depending on what is the read cycle, I read, as I said, the, you know, the first, the sixth, so, uh, I mean, yeah, they start with zero, so everything minus one, so the, uh, register 0, 6, 12, 30, 70, and 342 in order to get these values. And I've also noticed that I had to add a little bit of delay between all these reads, otherwise it wouldn't work. So when I go back to the settings.h and there, was, there were a couple of delays, those delays are related to the, the delays that I had to add because otherwise it would just would not work the, uh, would not read the registers reliably. So I think I'm reading these continuously with a, like a 250 millisecond delay. And obviously once I read all five of these, then I have a set of data that I publish to MQTT. Uh, that also means that uh, they are not perfectly in sync, but I think they are close enough. And you know, if you are reading the total active energy anyway at the end, um, in order to understand how much, well, what I want to understand is how much I use, how much energy I charge to the car in a charging session, then, you know, this timing is not really important. I think probably I would just use the active power to show it on some sort of UI and uh, also use the active energy, but everything else is, is pretty much irrelevant for me, I think. Well, at least it's going to be. So as I said, I'm reading, I'm doing these six, six cycles. I'm reading each of these registers one by one. Depending on which cycle I am, I'm just putting all the values into like a global object which has all the fields for the voltage, the current, the active power. And of course, I'm doing conversion from the Modbus float format to the you know, the actual C float format. So, okay, so that's then, uh, that's the conversion of the data. And once the, once I've gone through all the, you know, the six cycles and I have my six pieces of data, then I just put everything into the JSON format and that's when it gets sent out on MQTT. 
um, and yeah, that's it. And also the rest of it is just housekeeping and you know keeping track of the uptime and creating the status messages, sending those to MQTT. Uh, you can see that the RSSI uptime, this is where it all gets concatenated into a JSON format. Uh, also looking for the HTTP requests and um, uh, yeah, reconnect to MQTT. But again, the, the main loop is, is fairly simple because it's, uh, it's not really doing anything else. It's handling all the server uh, HTTP server requests. Uh, there is Arduino OTA, so over the air update also implemented in here. Uh, just like in my previous project, so there it has a handle. It's checking that the MQTT is connected. It's reading the input registers whenever this uh, that's the 250 millisecond mode bus delay, and um, yeah, checking the Wi-Fi connection as well. And this is the piece of code which then you know it turns the LED off after it's been on green or red. Um, so that's yeah, just handling the LED. So the rest of it is is you know, not related to Modbus. I also want to show you this web page. Uh, so that's not really ESP stuff. And this is just uh, some very simple JavaScript because I have the HTML code here, which describe, uh, which uh, displays all these cards that you have seen uh, previously. So if I go back to here, so these are the various cards. And then for each of the card, uh, wherever I display the number, I put it into a span which has a special ID. And um, whenever the web page loads, uh, there is a piece of JavaScript, uh, JavaScript code on the top. And uh, there is this command which uh, creates a one second um, timer. And in that basically in every second, it's going to refresh all the fields on the screen. So within those one second or one second window, it um, gets, it queries the status URL. So this is where it gets the, the big JSON that I've shown you previously. So this one, yeah. And then from the, from the JSON output, it just updates the various uh, parts in the HTML code. So uh, you can just read the the DOM element behind the HTML page and uh, find the, the element by the ID. So like C underscore voltage is uh, this C underscore voltage span element uh, within the HTML code. And you can just say inner HTML. So that's the text within the, the tag, which in this case is zero and you replace it with the data.voltage. So that's the, uh, the data field, or, sorry, the voltage field of the data object within the, the response JSON. So I find this the easiest way to, to program because then you just make one query and then you get the data and then you update the web page. And of course, everything is running on the on the client, so only in your web browser. So the only thing that the ESP sees is that is somebody is querying the status topic all the time, but then it just needs to serve the web page once and then everything runs on your computer or your uh, client, web client. So that's, uh, that was very easy and fun to do and just a little bit of extra functionality with, with very little extra work. So I thought i going to add this now and probably if I would have any other mode bus projects in the future, I would probably use the same method to, uh, to create this functionality or add this web page functionality as well. But I think that would be all for today. I think there is going to be some follow-up videos how I put this um, you know, module, everything in a box and I'm going to install it outside uh, along with the, you know, the car charger and of course you know, once this is up and running, I also had to do all the node, but node red part, which is just, you know, listening to the MQTT topic and then pushing the information into InfluxDB. And once, probably after a couple of weeks or a couple of months, once I have them, some data, I'm going to build a dashboard as well. So that's going to be another follow-up video once I have uh, some analytics based on the data that I collect with this unit. 
But if you want to replicate this project, there are going to be a couple of links in the video description. So first of all, there is going to be a link to this PCB project, to PCB Way. So if you need that, you can order the same PCB. And of course, I'm going to leave links in the... Well, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the links to the GitHub, which contains the, uh, the sketch. And within that GitHub page on the readme, I'm just going to have some additional links for to all the various components. So the obviously the VMOS D1 Mini, the converter, maybe the, if I can find a link on AliExpress for this NeoPixel and the small DC to DC converter and everything. And of course I can, you know, cross-link the PCB as well there. And um, not to mention that the very same project works with the old PCB as well. So if you don't want to use the LED, I mean, you just don't connect it, the sketch is still going to work. But if you want to use the power supply, you can still build the whole project uh, using the old PCB and it's going to work. So that will be all for today. Uh, there will be some follow-up videos, maybe in a couple of weeks or in a couple of months, I'm not really sure. So if you're interested in those, make sure that you subscribe so you get the notification on the new videos. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.